Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on, no, my lord? Which side are you on, boy? We cannot continue to accept these conditions of oppression, for this is not a struggle for ourselves alone. It is a struggle to save the soul of America. Which side are you on? And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. In the Deep South in 1960, segregation was enforced by state and local law. The so-called Jim Crow system denied black citizens equal treatment in every aspect of life. Even the press obeyed the color line. Back then, yes indeed, the only way a black person would get into the newspaper if it was for some criminal activity or for, for something along that line. Uh, and I noticed, I started to be aware of the fact that that was just not fair. The 1954 Supreme Court decision, Brown v. Board of Education, declared segregated schools unconstitutional. That decision put stories about race into the mainstream news. It was the national press that brought light to this issue in the South and brought changes to bear. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of that. A Montgomery City ordinance requires segregation on buses and gives drivers police power to enforce the law. December 1st, 1955. Rosa Parks was arrested in Montgomery, Alabama for refusing to give up her seat to a white rider. Black citizens organized a boycott of city buses. They won their fight and national exposure for their leader, a young minister named Martin Luther King, Jr. We were not seeking to put the bus company out of business, but to put justice in business. We were dealing with a positive thing. In September of 1957, the press focused the nation's attention on Little Rock, Arkansas, where Governor Orville Faubus and the White Citizens Council defiantly resisted the integration of Central High School. Moses Newsom covered the story for the Afro-American newspapers. And as we approached the street that runs in front of the school there, they had this big mob there. And uh, <clears throat> they, they confronted us. And of course, we pulled out our press credentials and that sort of thing, tell them that we were depressed. And that didn't cut any mustard at all. L. Alex Wilson was managing editor of the Memphis Tri-State Defender. He took the assignment himself, anticipating violence. When the mob attacked, news cameras were rolling and captured the vicious face of race hatred. I have today issued an executive order directing the use of troops under federal authority to aid in the execution of federal law at Little Rock, Arkansas. It was easy for black students like myself in the South to say, well, if they can do it in Little Rock, they can do it in Montgomery. If they can stand up, we can stand up too. Four college freshmen, all Negroes, were refused service at a Greensboro, North Carolina lunch counter, and the civil rights sit-in was born. The date was February 1st, 1960. The students' refusal to leave the counter launched an era of activism. The next day, 25 men and four women joined the sit-in. On February 5th, hundreds of students joined the protest. Well, I covered the uh, 1960 Greensboro, North Carolina sit-in movement. That was the one that caught fire and spread across the whole South. Television pictures of students mauled by mobs and manhandled by police stirred campus feelings from one end of the country to the other. The sit-ins to me was an exercise in democracy. Uh, that that you, uh, we were expressing our rights under the Constitution of the United States to protest and be against something. Hey, you, 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 nigga. You hear what that man said? Students faced abusive taunts in nonviolence classes, and the number of young people willing to stand up for equal rights was growing. In April of 1960, Ella Baker, who was then working with Dr. King, and Dr. King got together a group of young black college students in, at Shaw University 
and formed the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Everyone knew them as the snake kids. And they were the most idealistic, brave, devil may care group that you'd ever want to meet. I'm on my way, I'm on my way to freedom land. Spring 1961. The SNCC kids joined the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE, and took the sit-ins on the road. Called Freedom Riders, these integrated groups challenged segregation laws across the South. We never staged anything uh, for the sake of the media, but if we were going to sit in, we were going to go on a freedom ride, if we were, knew we were going to be arrested, we would inform the press to be there, to see it, to record it. May 14, 1961, Mother's Day. One bus was firebombed near Anniston, Alabama. The other was ambushed inside the Birmingham terminal. Six days later, there was yet another ambush at the state capitol, Montgomery. The Freedom Riders were promised protection by the governor, then abandoned by local police and beaten by the Ku Klux Klan. If you're going to beat us, uh, let somebody else see it. Don't beat us in the dark of the night. Uh, beat us while other people are watching so they can see it. And Martin Luther King was well aware that violence by whites and nonviolence were by blacks was a workable combination, very dramatic. That march will not continue. On March 7th, 1965, it was the police beating demonstrators in Selma, Alabama. Advance toward the group. See that they turn around and disperse. And once again, images from television news moved a president to take action. What happened in Selma is part of a far larger movement. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. The journey from a lunch counter in Greensboro to passage of the Voting Rights Act ended with a victorious signing ceremony on August 6, 1965. President Johnson, the Congress, and civil rights leaders removed barriers that stood between blacks and the ballot box for 95 years. What's more, the reporters and photographers who covered the civil rights movement showed the value and importance of a free press to our democracy. The media played a major role. Without the American press, the civil rights movement would have been like a bird without wings.